Praise the Lord, y'all. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Next week you, is man. Easter. Easter's coming up, but we got to talk about John first. We got to talk about Cousin John. Old Cousin John. Johak, what's Joke? Jokanan. That was his original Hebrew name, Jokanan. Jesus went to John to be baptized, right? We got to talk about that's how important John is because Jesus went to him to get baptized. John was prophesied of years before he was born. Jesus was John's cousin, right? John's father was mute. We got to talk about all of that real quick. Before we talk about Easter, we got to talk about John the beheaded. Jesus sent his cousin out to preach about him. And this was weird. Why was this weird? Because preachers usually preach the Bible. Preachers usually preach the uh, Tanakh, the Pentateuch. Preachers usually preach about back then in the synagogues that were reading the Bible. Now, John is sent out to preach about a dude. Nowadays in church, they preach about everything else but that dude. They preach about everything else but Jesus. Jesus said he comes in the volume of the book. When you read about God, you're reading about Jesus. Jesus said the books that Moses wrote, he wrote of me. When Moses wrote the law in Deuteronomy, he was writing about Jesus. When Moses met God in the burning bush, that was Jesus. That dude that removed the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots in Exodus chapter 14, that was Jesus. The guy in Genesis walking around in the garden talking to Adam, creating Eve from a rib, that was Jesus. But now, God had to choose a person that would be accepted. He had to choose a person that could be heard, a person that would they what people allow to preach about Jesus and not what they were preaching about before. Not the Pentateuch, not about the plagues of Egypt. We want you to preach about this man. Not about the law. We want you to preach about a man. All right. Let me tell you how special John the Baptist was or John the Beheaded was. The Holy Ghost wasn't given until the day of Pentecost, but there were some exceptions. The angel Gabriel told John's father, John's father's name was Zechariah. All right, Zechariah, the angel told him, you're going to have a child. Zechariah said, how will I know this? Me and my wife are too old. And the angel said in Luke chapter 1, verse 20, and behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because you didn't believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So when Mary went to visit, Mary, whose uh, cousin was uh, Elizabeth, who was Zechariah's um, Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, was Mary's cousin. All right. The moment Elizabeth heard Mary say, praise the Lord, the baby shouted in her womb. John the Baptist was immediately filled with the Holy Ghost. I told you all there were some exceptions. Elizabeth was immediately filled with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist got filled with the Holy Ghost inside of the womb. How nice would that be? And it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. And they called him Zacharias, after the name of the father. Why are they circumcising people in the New Testament? I thought that was done away with. They're circumcising kids still on the eighth day? Why are they obeying Old Testament commandments? I thought we were done with that. They named him Zacharias Jr., the mother said, no, name him John. That's what the angel told her to name him. They asked the father and they said, wait a minute, there's nobody else in your family that's named John. Huh? So remember the, the angel made John's father, Zechariah's mute. So they gave him something to write on. They said, hey, what should your son's name be? In Luke chapter one, verse 63, he said, he asked for a writing tablet and he wrote saying his name is John. And they marveled and they said, What's going on here? How, what? And then his mouth was immediately opened and his tongue loosened and he spake and watch this. And he praised God and his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. I told y'all there's some exceptions. And he prophesied saying, blessed be the Lord of Israel. We have visited and redeemed his people. That's a that's a nugget right there. God came to visit and redeem his people. There are so many people that's walking this earth that don't know their purpose. That's what I want to talk about real quick today. There are people that will never, ever experience fulfillment until you go to God and allow him to reveal your purpose yes, for yes. being here. You're not just here. You were not just sent here to go to school, get a house, become a consumer, buy and sell, get a car, buy some more stuff and then die. You were sent here with a purpose. 
John's purpose was planned out and prophesied years before he was born. Yours was too. And the Bible says that he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Elias here means Elijah. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Did you notice what it said? He's going to go forth in the spirit. Catch that. In the spirit and the power of Elijah. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. And he shall make, uh, and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Notice very carefully it said go in the spirit of Elijah. I want you all to remember that in a couple seconds. Mark 1 verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness. And he preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And remember, this was before Jesus' crucifixion. This was before Jesus was murdered. So after Jesus was murdered, the baptism changed. So you have to get baptized in Jesus' name now. All right. So John is working. He's working in the wilderness. He's preaching. And he's, he stays in the wilderness. He ate grasshoppers. He ate honey. That's, you got to do what you got to do. I'm working in the church. I'm testifying. I'm cleaning up. I'm visiting the sick. I'm feeding the homeless. I'm on the baptism committee. I'm giving faithfully. I'm paying. I'm giving all the money that I got. I'm showing up every Sunday. That's the equivalent of what John the Baptist does. I'm doing all of that, but the devil never lets up. He never gives you a break. He doesn't care about your problems. He doesn't care how much he afflicts you. He's already gotten permission to afflict you. Because the Bible says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. And he shall wear out the saints of the most high God. The Bible says he's going to wear us out. Do you think that excludes you? The Bible says the devil is going to wear you out. Do you think that excludes you? All right. Did they tell you that when you got saved? Come on, no. Nope. <laughs> you still want to be a saint? Uh, I read the back of the book though. We come yeah. out victorious. Yes, we come out yes. powerful. We come out mighty. Out. So just hold on a little while longer. God is going to make a way out of no way. John is out here working in the ministry. He's preaching some hard things. He preached against Herod for marrying his sister-in-law, Herodias. He married his brother's wife. Herod had a brother named Philip. Philip divorced his wife and Herod married that wife. Leviticus 20 verse 21 says, And if a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's nakedness. Yes. So what did Pharaoh do? I mean, Pharaoh. What did Herod do? Herod got mad because you preached against what he was doing. And Herod himself, he sent forth and he laid upon John and he bound him in prison for Herodias sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John said unto Herod, it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but he could not because John had too many followers and it would have caused riots if he would have killed him. He really wanted to kill him, but he settled for putting him in jail. Are you willing to tell your kids that holiness is still right? When did it change? Are you willing to lose your job just to keep the standard? Are you willing to cry loud and spare not even if it costs you jail time or your life? God has more confidence in you than you have in your own self. He knows what you can take. He knows what it takes to put a power phrase down in your spirit like he did me. You know what a power phrase is? That means you go through some hard times. You have to deal with some tough stuff and you get something down in your spirit that says never again. Hallelujah. There are some actions that bring consequences. Those consequences make you say never again again so don't despise the adverse things that you go through don't despise humble beginnings the bible is clear the commandment clearly says you cannot marry your brother's wife your brother's divorced wife you just can't it's plain and simple but herodias wanted to marry into royalty click that so to go she didn't care what the word of god said when she heard the word of god repeated in her ears it irritated her it vexed her spirit. She couldn't stand it. Your desire should never be contrary to the word of God. That's good enough. Why is that the default emotion? Why is it the default emotion? Why is it the default emotion when the Bible challenges you? The, first, the default emotion is always anger. Why is that? When you, the Bible challenges your spirit, why is the first... Try telling a woman that God, the Bible forbids you from wearing britches. Will they get sad? No. They respond with the same spirit that you see this woman responding with. It will irritate them. Yep, you're right. Yes, you're right. yes, 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 Amen. yes. 
you don't have a problem with the scriptures that agree with you, but them, them scriptures that say don't wear this, don't eat that, mm -hmm. those tick me off, right? right? And if you hear it, if you hear somebody say it, you develop a desire to kill them. Yep. Enc right. Encourage somebody to, to not to have babies out of wedlock. Right. Try telling somebody not to have an abortion. They'll cuss you out. Tell a man to stop shocking up. They'll never talk to you again. Man. Try telling a woman to cover up your boobs. <laughs> Don't be a monger for the whoremonger. Man. Tell a man to respect a woman enough to marry her first. Man. You know why you won't marry her first? Because you're a punk and you're scared of, com of commitment. That's what your problem is. But you need to show that woman some respect. Marry that woman and get some favor from God. This generation of people, they, these are the worst people in the world because they can't stand the truth. It makes their skin boil and they get mad and they get irritated and want to fight you because of what the Bible said before they was even born. And saints of the Most High God were crippled when somebody said, you're not supposed to judge. Don't judge me. <laughs> you don't even need a response. All you need is the word. Because John 7, 24, is this all you got to do? If I see that online somewhere, I'll just type John 24 and I'll just leave it like that. Judge not according to the appearance, but... Judge righteous judgment. Ooh, what does Leviticus 19, 15 says? You shall, do no, you shall do no unrighteous in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thy judge thy neighbor. What does 1 Corinthians 6, 2 say? Do ye, no, do ye not know that the saints shall do what? Judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? There's another scripture. I couldn't fit it on here, but it says, don't you know we're going to judge the angels? Here's a solution for all you folk that don't like to be judged. All you folk that can't stand to hear the word of God. That don't want to be rebuked. Here's a solution for folk that can't, you can't tell them the truth. First Corinthians 11, 31 says, for if we judge ourselves, yes. we should yes. not be judged. Come if you now. fix the filth in your own life, amen, amen. if you stop sinning, if you stop breaking the commandments, I need you to stop that. If you stop breaking the commandments, then nobody can judge you. Amen. It seemed like Jesus didn't even care that John was in jail. Why didn't he send an angel? Why didn't he send an angel like he did for Paul? Why didn't he send an angel like he did for Silas or Peter? Have you ever felt like that? Why not help me, God? If I did everything right. In fact, I'm in jail for preaching your word. I'm in trouble for doing the right thing. I'm the only one that, I no, I'm not the only one. Am I the only one that went through some hard stuff and you can't figure out why God won't just fix it? God, why are you ignoring me? The pain is overwhelming and I can't take it. The doctor said we can't have kids, y'all. They told my wife that she couldn't have kids from her youngest age, from the earliest age of going to the doctor. They told her you will never be able to have kids. But God allowed her to get pregnant. When the doctors told us, hey, the heartbeat is slowing down. I prayed with all my might. We prayed, we yes, prayed, yes. we begged God. And we believed God would fix it. We believed him. We believed God would fix it. And then we went to the doctor. And as my wife was laying in the bed, the absolute worst thing that we could expect happened, happened. So now I have to lay there. I have to sit there. I have to comfort my wife. And at the same time, I have to wonder why did God allow this to happen? I thought it was a blessing when she got pregnant because the doctor said you couldn't get pregnant. Stop that. And the, and the doctors were wrong. We probably should go back and go talk to each one of those doctors. But she was pregnant for nothing. We had to sit there and pray over our dead baby. And I still didn't believe it was final enough. I believe God can still raise this baby up. Am I crazy for thinking that? Because, because. Because I had faith. I lived holy. I got baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah. I worked hard in the church. Yeah. I've given so much money till my check bounced. I did everything I was supposed to do. Why did God <laughs> abandon me? Why did he ignore me? Why didn't he answer me? Why didn't he show up? Why is my dead son laying in this room and I can't help him? I don't even have the words to tell my wife. And I can't show any pain because I'm not going through what she's going through. Huh? Matthew 11 verse 2. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples to go talk to God. He sent somebody to go basically to go pray. Let me tell y'all something. 
life can be so hard and it can it can almost destroy you it, if you don't if you don't handle stress if you don't handle depression if you don't handle it the proper way it will destroy you yes i do believe god i do believe his power and we have a miracle child come here after after we lost that kid after we had to deal with that horrible thing we found out that she was pregnant again do you think i believe then she had two miscarriages before that then we had a stillborn so when they told us you got to have another baby we didn't even pick a name because the last time we had godparents i mean we believe god man yep. what, what what do you want me to do now go through all of that again no it, it's embarrassing what, her, her niece came to the hospital and she was young enough to understand that she's pregnant. And when she came to the hospital, she thought that there was going to be a baby. No, there's no baby. She had to go home empty handed. It's hard. It's horrible. But look at her. This is what we had. Now, when she was first born, the doctor said, we got some problems. There's problems with her blood. We can't get her color right. She got jaundice. We got everything. They kept her. And you think, you think I didn't pray? And I prayed, but this time I prayed with doubt because life got to me, stress got to me. It's not gonna happen. This child is gonna die again. When this child came home, I told my wife, don't ever leave her alone because I don't want her to die alone. This is the baby that the doctor said we could not have. This is the child that we prayed for and God took him away and then look what he did. This is a miracle child. This is a miracle child. This is a miracle child. Thank you, Jesus. 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 John had a connection with God before calamity struck. I think the benefit was I had a connection with God before this happened, and I didn't give up on him. It wasn't until me and my wife at separate times and separate places said, Lord, whatever you want, God. If you don't want us to have kids, I obey. Lord, I'll do whatever you say. When my wife told me that she had the same conversation with him, that's what fixed the problem. I had a connection with God before. John had a connection with God before. He was able to get a word to God before he got in trouble. He had a bond with God before he got in trouble. Don't wait until the house is on fire to Come pray. Now. Pray yeah, now. Yeah. Don't wait until you get fired from your job. Pray yeah. now. Yeah. Pray when you don't feel like it. Pray when you're tired. Pray when you're sick. Pray when things are going well. Pray on good days. Pray in the morning. Pray on holidays. Pray at work. Pray in the shower. Just pray. And don't stop praying. Pray without ceasing Amen. somebody said don't question god yes don't ask god why show me that in the bible show me in the bible and say i'm not supposed to ask god because i asked god a whole bunch of questions yes, sir. why did you abandon me yes. why did you leave me why are you ignoring me why didn't you hear my prayers what do you want me to do when i need answers that man cannot give I'm about to lose it. If I did everything I'm supposed to do, why did these terrible things happen to me? Yes. All right, what happens if I just say forget it? And walk away from God. He don't care anyway, right? He's not hearing my prayers anyway. But I heard the Bible say, Come on now, testify. He'll never leave me. Never. He'll never forsake me. Never. Hallelujah. Never. Check this out. In Isaiah it says, but Zion said, the yes. Lord had forsaken me. Who's Zion? Where's Zion? Yes. And my Lord hath forgotten gotten me but god said wait a minute can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yea oh, yeah. they may forget yet i will not forget you Thank listen you, listen listen to this you ever read this scripture behold i have graven in the palm of my hands <laughs> you are graven in the palm of god's hands thy walls are continually before me god has not forgotten about you oh, he has even if he don't answer, even if he don't show up, yes. even if he don't give you what you want, God has not forgotten about it. Thank you, but life will make you question your faith. Oh, yes, it will. I'm trying to prepare somebody for what could inevitably happen because trauma visits everybody's home. Tragedy visits everybody home. I'm trying to prepare you for that. Some super saved person will come to you and say, oh, where's your faith? They'll give you whatever re revelant script, whatever, you know, they just come up with a scripture and they just give you whatever revelant scripture they can, they can think of at the time. They'll offer you some goofy cliche, like God closes a door without opening a window. I don't want to hear that. Time. <laughs> what do you, time heals all wounds and all this foolishness. But what do you do when this weapon is prospering? Ooh, what do you do when the weapon is prospering? 
When the men were come unto him, the Bible says, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you. Uh -huh. These are the men that's coming to Jesus saying, are you the one? Are you the one? Or should we look for somebody else? You see how stress can bring you to the point where you don't even know who Jesus is? Life's problems can make you question God. Heartache can make you question if you even have the Holy Ghost. Do I still have the Holy Ghost? Did he leave me? Did I disappoint him? How can John possibly not know who his cousin Jesus is? This is his own cousin. Man. How can John, who is Elijah, remember I said pay attention, it says, he come in the spirit of Elijah. How can he not know who God is? It doesn't make sense for him to ask that question. How can John not know who Jesus is when John got filled with the Holy Ghost when he just heard Jesus' mother's voice? All she did was just say, praise the Lord. All she did is salute him. But stress can make you miss your mission. Stress can make you miss and lose your focus. That's why we got to get stress under control. Well, you opened your big mouth and you said, Lord, <laughs> you <laughs> It was you that testified and said, look, use me any way you can, Lord. Yes. yes. You open your big mouth and say, use me, Lord. You said that. Yeah. 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 You testified any way you bless me, Lord. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look at the ministry. Look at the ministry. It's working as intended. Right? Because this is what Jesus told him. Jesus told him, listen, this is what you go tell John. Go show John again these things which you do here. The blind receive their sight, the lame are walking, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, Amen. the poor have the gospel preached to them. Okay, so you said any way you use me, Lord, right? Right? Yes. So why aren't you happy? The blind are receiving their sight, so you're happy? The gospel is being preached, so are you happy? Huh? Jesus did something extremely weird here. He huh? does a eulogy about John, and then says, go tell him what I said. He, he, that's all he did, he just told him, well, you, you want to know if I'm God? Just tell them the stuff that I do, which is basically saying I'm God. Yep. You are working in your purpose, right? Right? You, you want to see souls saved? Yep. How much are you willing to spend to see a sinner repent? All How much right. are you willing to give up for that? How much are you willing to go through for this gospel? Oh. Jesus never addressed John again. He never addressed him being in jail. He ignored his current situation. He didn't say anything about him being in jail. Not a single word. Why? Why didn't he say something about it? Basically, Jesus told him, just go tell him I'm God. You don't need to know anything else other than I'm still God. I'm sorry to tell you, John, God ain't coming. And I know that ain't what you want to hear. I want to hear this new stuff that these new preachers preaching now. You know, five steps to a turnaround. You, I want preachers to preach some smooth things. He ain't coming. He may not come when you want him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, I want to hear... God's going to fix it. God's going to work it out. But instead, I got to deal. I'm forced to deal with reality, right? The, the fact of the matter is whatever you're going through, you're going to have to deal with it. What am I going to do? What am I going to do if the lot that has been chosen for me is more than I can handle? They lied when they said the Lord won't put more on you. When the, 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 the Bible does not say that. The Bible does not say that God won't put more on you than you can bear. Stop saying that. That's out of context. That scripture is about temptation, and I'm not dealing with temptation. Oh, this is about oh, yeah. a job or me being fired. This is about marriage or divorce. This is about jail or freedom. This is about life or death. And God isn't delivering me from this. And I asked him, I remember asking him, God, please do this one thing for me. Take this one thing away from me. This one problem that I can't fix and the doctors, the best doctors in the world can't fix it. Do this one thing for me. And God said nothing. And he didn't do it. He didn't fix it. If you're serving God and you're doing everything right, what do you do if he don't show up? Are you going to turn your back on him? What, what if you don't get your prayers answered? Are you really going to backslide? There is an answer. There is a way out of this mental anguish that you're going through. There's one solution for it. If you're serving God, you're doing everything right, and God doesn't show up. You don't have to turn your back on God. Don't worry about your loved one that died. Because the Bible says, I'm going to read this real quickly. quickly. Matthew 11, verse 14. And if ye will receive it. I want y'all to catch that. The first thing you realize if you ever became a preacher is you can't preach everything to everybody. That's why Jesus said, and if you will receive it. That means if you can handle this. Amen. He's talking about John the Baptist. He said, this 
is Elijah, which was prophesied to come. This is Elijah. And Jesus said unto them in verse number 11, Elijah truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah has already come and you didn't know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then the disciples in verse number 13, it says, then the disciples understood that he spoke about John the Baptist. I want to comfort your heart if you're grieving the loss of a loved one. No need to do a eulogy and force them up into heaven. God is in control. You ain't got no heaven. You ain't got no hell to put anybody in. So shut your mouth. Let God do God level stuff. All you need to do is try to win as many souls as you can Amen. to God. Yes. That's your job. John being in jail wasn't enough to satisfy the rage and the wrath of this woman that couldn't stand being judged, that couldn't stand to hear the word of God directed towards her. And when a convenient day was come, Mark 6, verse 21, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, his captains, his chief, all of the big shots. He made a big dinner for them. And the daughter, and when uh, Herodias' daughter, her name was Salome, when she came in, she danced for him yep. and she pleased Herod that sat with him. And the king said unto her, ask me whatever you want. Yep. Old nasty behind. This old nasty king said, ask me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. <laughs> and that old nasty king swore unto her, whatever you ask me, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, I mean, I'll give you up to half of the kingdom because you danced for me and you just old nasty behind. And she went forth. <laughs> And she said unto her mother, My, she, I, I can get whatever I want. What, what should I do? He said, the mother said, ask him for the head of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. She said, okay. She ran to the king. She ran to Herod. She said, listen, I need John the Baptist's head. Put it on a plate. Bring it to me. And because he gave his word, he had to have it done. All of these bootleg preachers, all these prosperity preachers, they lie to you and they tell you you won't go to nut, that you don't have to go through anything. But life is not peaches and creams. It's hills and valleys. It's going, I'm going to plant some plants and some roses on these hills and these valleys. All right, that's I don't want to hear that Amen. motivational prosperity <laughs> pimp stuff anymore. I can't Amen. take it. And immediately the Bible says, the Amen. king sent an executioner. He just got executioners sitting around waiting. He just... Imagine that. Your king just got people just waiting and that's their job. Just go kill people. He sent him and he commanded him to bring me the head of John the Baptist. And he went and he beheaded John the Baptist in prison. in prison. So being in jail ain't even enough. You think that's the problem you're dealing with? That's what you're praying for? That's what you're worried about? And the devil has the power to send something even worse while you're in the worst state of your life already. You're already locked up. And you got to get your head chopped off while you're locked up. You can let me get out a little while and go see my family or nothing. The worst part came when I thought the worst part came. You mean to tell me even during the worst part, the devil is still working? He never stops. He don't never go to sleep. Well, how can he? His desire is to destroy you. That's his job. He wants your head. All right, so there we go. We're just going to deal with life. And this is what he did. He brought his head. Gave it to her, just like she asked. And the, 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 the young girl, she took it, gave it to her mother. Hey, John. Hey, John. That's what you get for preaching the truth. That's what you get for working in the ministry. Is this what happens after you pray? Your enemies are allowed to prevail over you? You don't even get a chance at revenge? God allowed this to happen? God, how could you? You could have stopped this. This woman could have had anything she wanted, but she wanted his head. Right. She wanted to shut the mouth of the person that told her about her sins. She couldn't stand it. She can't stand to hear the word of God. And she got exactly what she wanted. The devil think he prevailed, but God is a chess player. Right. See, your life is already planned out. It includes the good stuff, but the bad stuff is in there too. He planned it all out. So don't despise humble beginnings. Like I said, don't despise being sick. It's all in the plan. Salome's name was you know, Shlomith. That was her real name? That was Okay, so that was her Hebrew name. Salome was her, I guess, her Greek name. Guess what her name means? Her name means she who brings peace and tranquility. <laughs> that's, what her, that's what her name means, peace and tranquility. Now you, you might laugh, but if you can't stand the word of God 
and the person that judged you was murdered, from that person's viewpoint, this is peace and tranquility. Right, you right. This, this is exactly what she wanted. She got exactly what she wanted. This is peace to shut the word of God up. Hey, John, tell us what to do if you end up in prison. What should we do during our darkest hour? What did you do when you were facing the guillotine? I heard John. John, you know what he said? Keep serving God. Amen. Don't give up. Don't turn to sin. Hold on to him a little while longer. God is going to make everything all right. If folk hate you, uh -huh. it's all right. Because I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. It's all right. If your husband run off and leave you, if your wife run off and leave you, it's all right. Because I'm still yet saved. Yeah. If your loved one dies, yeah. it's all right. Hallelujah. Because one bright morning, yeah. when this life is over, I'm going to take the wings of this morning. I'm going to fly away. If you feel like life is too hard, if you feel like Hallelujah. this is too much to bear, if you're at the brinks of your life and you feel like giving up, Send for Jesus as long as he knows. I'm so glad to know the Lord knows the way that I take. Amen. I'm yes. so glad that my steps are ordered by the Lord. I'm so Thank glad you. that God has good things to say about good me. Because I Thank served him when I could. So yes. when calamity comes, it's all right. I did the best I could. I served him when I was young. I served uh -huh. him when I had health. Don't look to tarot card readers oh, to man. try to figure out your life. Don't step in. Don't take your foot and put your nasty, dirty foot in a palm reader's house. Forget about them zodiac signs. Yes. The Bible says yes. whatever is not of faith is sin. sin. Go find out your purpose. You know how you find it out? By spending time with God. When, yes. you, decide, when, you, when you figure out why you were sent here, yes. trust me, all the problems of life won't even matter won't even anymore. Matter. It won't matter anymore. No, it won't. Yes. You're not just here. Nothing just happens. Yes. Life has a purpose and a meaning specific for you. Yes. Don't spend another day aimlessly rushing towards your inevitable demise. Don't spend another moment thinking that just, I'm just here and I'm just hanging out and I'm just going to live my life. Go find out what your purpose is. Go spend some time with God and figure out why I'm here. Trust me. Yeah. This is the greatest thing that anybody could ever tell you. This is the greatest life advice that you could ever get. Go yeah. figure out God's purpose for your life. Man doesn't have the answers. You need to hear it from God Almighty. Man. Life can make you think you got it wrong. That's why you got to know your purpose. Your yeah. destiny might be adverse, but at least God knows where you are. And at least God knows what you're going through. You might be in jail. You might be facing some dire situations. But John never asked again after he realized, all right, is God? Good. He knows where I'm at. I can continue since it doesn't really matter what I'm going through. As long as I'm in his will. John died, but it's all right. Because people got saved. Right? Yeah, yeah. People got healed. John yeah. paved the way for Jesus to do this work. So it's all right. John paved the way for miracles to happen. So it's all right. John paved the way for Jesus to preach to the poor. So it, it's okay. Once your purpose has been fulfilled, rejoice. Man. If you know what your purpose is, rejoice. Right. Rejoice if you finished your course. Praise the Lord if you ran your race. Don't worry about what happens in between. Did you please God? Did you, Did you make God happy? My favorite scripture in the whole book, John 3.22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. <laughs> tell somebody, tell, turn to, if you got the Holy Ghost, if somebody's with you, somebody's in your house with you, do me a favor and just turn to them, turn to them and just tell them, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been filled with the Holy Hallelujah. Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And everything is going to be all right. Hey, glory. The Lord heard me. Thank you, Jesus. He knows where I'm at. He Thank knows you, what I'm going Hallelujah. through. If he shows up, praise him. If hey. he shows up late, praise him. If he chooses not to deliver me, I'll worship him until I die. Trust me with your, with your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah.